Welcome, Take It Up with Jessica Lee. I'm here with Kathleen Rouse from Financial Force. And Kathleen, you are in charge of customer success, right? Head of customer success, which is a hot topic. And you just came out of a conference that's all about customer success. Yes. So I wanted to welcome you to the show. And uh, let's hear it about Financial Force and about this industry that you are in. Absolutely. Well, first, thank you for um, having me on this show and giving me the opportunity to tell the story mm -hmm. of Financial Force. My pleasure. Um, and so for all of those that don't know about Financial Force, we are the number one professional services automation tool mm -hmm. and the only customer-centric ERP solution built on the Salesforce platform. So a lot of times, that's a lot of words, and <laughs> oftentimes people want to know what does that yeah. mean. But we drive business value for our customers such as Highland, which is the leading content management solution um, provider mm. for companies in the higher ed industry, financial institutions, healthcare, um, and they recently uh, were evaluated by Nucleus Research, mm -hmm. who um, looked at the return on investment from their investment with Financial Force, found that in less than two months, they achieved a 695% ROI. Wow. So really tremendous work to the team um, and through the use of our professional services okay. tool. That's a great story. It's a great story. And um, I also uh, want to call out Methods is another customer of ours. Okay. Um, they are based in the UK. They partner with um, government agencies are, and are really focused on transforming the way that the um, public sector operates. Okay. Um, and so they've been using our solution, they're, they're using the full breadth of the solution mm -hmm. from our professional services to our ERP solutions. Um, and they're, they're driving and achieving significant success. Um, there's things like, you know, 40% reduction on uh, finance um, activities, okay. really tremendous results for our customers. Such okay. as those. And customer success is a challenging role because you have to prove your value every time to make sure they renew the contract. Yes, right? that's right. And you've built up this uh, customer success organization from scratch, the strategy, the operations of it. Tell us, what does it take to be successful and how do you measure success? Oh, great question. Well, first, within Financial Force, the customer success team owns the revenue mm -hmm. of the customer base. And so um, what that means is that we, we want to be very clear and respect the investment that our customers make with us. Mm -hmm. um, pretty significant investment with us. And so it's very important from, you know, when I when I came into the organization, um, it was it's, it's my own passion to ensure that customer success managers are true advisors to mm -hmm. our customers. Mm -hmm. So um, first, we took time to define the customer life cycle, okay. you know, from the evaluation phase through um, the new customer implementation, adopting, and then seasoned customer phase. Okay. And it was super important to me to make sure we understood through interviews and, and conversations with our customers, whether or not our customers were achieving the value mm -hmm. that they wanted to achieve, mm -hmm. and were we um, addressing the goals that we wanted to achieve at each point of the customer life cycle. So that was really important to me as um, I built out how the team would engage with our customers mm -hmm. and at what point in their journey would they engage and how would they engage. Um, I see. I would assume that you have to be very like technical in knowing the product with financial force product to be able to recommend uh, opportunities for additional value to the client. Is that right? Absolutely. Well, what's interesting is actually when I think about the team that I've built, I have folks um, that are, and, and just to take a step back, the team is structured from the customer success managers who are aligned to our customers and mm -hmm. they should be the um, experts on how our customers are using our products and the value that they're looking to gain out of our products. Okay. Then I have a team of technical customer success managers okay. which are aligned to the products. I see, I see. Um, and so that being said, um, and, and those technical customer success managers come in at very finite 
very um, specific times mm. in the customer life cycle to address challenges to get them to the next phase of adoption. Um, so that being said, I actually have a broad mix of mm. the backgrounds of my team, and I'm really proud of that. Mm -hmm. So I do have people that are developers, ex-developers, mm -hmm. or they say recovering developers, <laughs> if you will. Um, I have folks that are really fantastic relationship managers. Okay. Um, I have people that actually were product owners. Um, they used to be financial force customers, mm -hmm. and so they can really understand yeah, what our customers yeah. are going through. Yeah. So really fortunate to have built a tremendous team from various backgrounds. Mm -hmm. And I um, I would say that when I, I think about the traits of a really um, successful customer success manager and the people that have excelled within my team, mm -hmm. they are curious, they are passionate, um, and they are able to empathize with the customer so that they can always you know, put themselves in their shoes yes. and, and figure out what, what is it that we can do to help you get to the next stage in your journey. What challenges do you face now? I know that with the customer success, you have tools to look at a lot of data and yes. you get a lot of signals yes. to be proactive, right? But what are the challenges you're trying to solve? Yeah, it's a great question. Well, first, I want to um, just highlight that our team um, achieved a 90 plus percent um, renewal rate. Okay. And um, we've got a really strong retention um, of our customers. Mm -hmm. But you know, if I think about what our challenges are, it's it's actually just the large amount of data mm. on our customers. So we're, uh, we're you, we use Gainsight, we of course use our products, we use um, uh, you know PSA and financial management breadth of, of products. But all of that, um, we're, we're consolidating into a scorecard, mm -hmm. um, which we've built within Gainsight. We're on version two mm -hmm. of our mm -hmm. scorecard. And it's all about trying to organize the data in a way that helps us understand the health of our customers so that our CSMs can know where they need to focus and why. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, like I said, we're on we're on kind of V2 and, and we're looking at business value, we're looking at um, the likelihood to renew and the customer experience. You know, and each of those attributes, uh, if you think about business value, we're pulling in data around, you know, how the customers are using the product, how, um, extensively have they been um, assigning out the licenses that they've purchased. Um, when you think about the likelihood to renew, it's what's the expansion opportunities mm -hmm. um, and um, what has been the activity from that aspect. Are they red, right? Is there a red account? And then um, from a customer experience perspective, it, we're, we're looking at how is their interaction with support? Right. Um, how are they consuming the latest versions, et cetera? Um, but there's so much data um, that, and, and I'll, I'll tell you, I have conversations with our sales leaders who each day they want to know this, uh, you know, we want to slice and dice the data in this different way, you know, and, and how do we get it down and how do we make sure that we've got the right points of data that are going to drive the needle when we think about expansion opportunities with our customer base mm -hmm. and to help our sales team um, grow our net new revenue as well. So those are those are some of the key challenges is making sure that we can, you know, serve up the data in a way that helps us to be intelligent about our customer base. I'm curious to know how customer success managers are um, incentivized to make sure that they are hitting these KPIs. Yes, absolutely. Well, I think that there are kind of, you know, when you when you talk about incentives, there are a few aspects that we look at. Um, you know, we look at the renewal rates, mm -hmm. um, and we also look at our expansion of our customer base. Okay. Um, we're also focused on. Again, I said there's a, a large group of my CSMs who are tasked with being the experts of our customers, right. and so we're also focused on telling the customer success story well whether that be through case studies or through being a speaker or through um, leading some kind of executive forum, whatever, whatever it may be. But um, when it comes down to what I have the team focus on, uh, we are responsible for maintaining the revenue. And so that's the significant portion of um, how this, how our CSMs, my CSMs are comped. But do, do they get like bonus or is it yes. all fixed? 
No, it is it is through a bonus. Okay. Yeah, it's a great question. So, um, and, and I think it's important to ensure that uh, you know when you think about how you're incentivizing your CSMs, um, we I want them to be more focused on customer success, yeah. and then beyond that is you know the bonus uh, based on the retention rate, the expansion rate. Mm -hmm. um, Etc. That but, makes sense. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because I think that on the sales side, it's already assumed you get base and, and commission. Yes. You want to motivate the sales people to close deals. But on the customer success side, which is sales and customer service uh, combined, yes. really in one person, there's got to be a similar structure to what salespeople are, are incentivized to do. I, I think that makes sense. Exactly. Well, and and it's a good point you raised. The other the other piece that we recently introduced, and I have to give props to my chief um, operating officer, um, who advocated for the CSMs to have a path to President's Club. Mm -hmm. and ah, that, great idea. Yes, yes. So that was a fantastic way to really recognize the value that mm -hmm. the customer success team mm -hmm. brings mm -hmm. to the organization, because there's a pretty significant amount of revenue that yes. our team is responsible for. Yes, okay, yeah. great. Let's talk about how you're working very closely with the product team, because I think that's very important. Yes. Um, I am so passionate about, and I, and I come from a background where customer success and product have partnered very effectively together. Mm -hmm. And I think that there's an opportunity for customer success to provide you know, I'll, I'll say the human telemetry to our product organization. And in ways, the customer success team is also kind of a gateway to our customer base. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that our chief product officer is really passionate about is um, driving um, a really good alignment and uh, a feedback loop yes. with our customers. Right. And so, um, Product leadership and um, my team all work together to define a global, globally scaled um, product research process, ah, if you will, okay. or product engagement process. Yep, yep. Um, because you know, I think that uh, without having kind of visibility or a mechanism to kind of measure and. Uh, provide a transparent way to see who you're interacting with mm -hmm. from product organization, you can oftentimes get the same information over and over again from yeah. your customers. So um, I partnered with the um, product leadership to define a, a scalable product research engagement process. Mm -hmm. It's all built within our tool in um, Salesforce, where uh, Salesforce and Financial Force, where we are tracking these research engagements um, as product is going through and building out their um, features, maybe they're even just defining a proof of concept, or they have some wireframes that they want to show to a customer, um, the CSMs can then nominate their customers and say, hey, we have customers that are either particularly interested in this or they're challenged in this area. Mm. And so we've really built a, a really strong process around bringing our product and our custom product team and our customers together effectively. Um, and now our customers, one, they feel like they uh, have a voice mm -hmm. in the product development process. Um, two, the product team is delivering what our customers want and they can very clearly show these are the customers that have influenced our current release. Um, so really proud of that. The CSMs are super excited about it as well because they can very easily see who our product team has engaged with and what is the feedback. Okay, so a lot of things going on. What are you excited about? What's the next big thing for you? Yes, uh, great question. So the next big thing for, for us is to really refine and expand the customer success um, discipline mm -hmm. across the entire organization. Okay. And so that means taking this one source of truth that we have around customer health, um, the renewal, retention, and expansion forecasting, mm. and making that visible to the entire organization. So that's what I'm super passionate about. And that'll help to ensure that 
everyone understands how they fit around the customer's journey and how the customer is centered to everything that we do. So we're partnering with um, our finance, operations, sales team, etc., all around this one source of truth, Gainsight and Einstein Analytics. All right, that's great, because these are very important not key metrics to drive company success and the yes. growth of the company. So everyone needs to pay attention to that. Exactly. And by making it visible, um, they can see their impact. Exactly, okay. exactly. So that's number one. And then number two is, um, aligning or driving adoption and engagement, continuing to refine that throughout the customer maturity cycle. Mm. So I think that's the next phase of the customer life cycle is let's talk about that maturity model right. and where do our customers sit and how can we get them to that next level. And that's um, really excited to partner with really across the entire organization again. Product, sales, marketing, um, support services so really um and giving a view of that to our customers um as well as to our csms right so so having that ability for our customers to be able to see here's where i am today and here's where i need to be and here's how i'm going to get there i think one of the common uh denominator of all these departments that you talk about as you're as you're talking about sales marketing and customer success is the knowledge like the product knowledge that you need to feed these different audiences. Yes, absolutely. It's the product knowledge. It's how our customers are using the product mm -hmm. to gain the value um, and, and realize the value of, um, of why they originally intended to purchase Financial Force. Excellent. Yes. Well, it's been a pleasure to have you here, Kathleen, on the show to share with us your thoughts on customer success. and. Um, I know that you just attended the industry event of customer success, so it's great to have you share what's going on. Yes, thank you. There you have it, folks. Take it up with Jessica Lee, Kathleen Rouse from Financial Force.